Well, um, hey, everyone, and welcome to week 13 of the Fantasy Baseball Experience podcast. Um, I got Will Sayers with me, co-hosting again. Ethan is um, apparently at a casino tonight. Um, Kinsley, I don't know if you knew that. So um, Yeah, I do know that. It's okay. <laughs> um, I got Kinsley, who was the second highest scorer this week, uh, behind me, um, as usual. And then I got Bitten, who I think Bitten might have been the lowest scorer this week. No? Uh, no. I think it was uh, second. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Second Kimbo. lowest scorer. Yeah. Um, Put some respect on her, on her name. Uh, yeah. Oh, welcome, okay. to, welcome to the show. Um, Will, I'll, uh, I'll let you take it from here. All right. What's up, you guys? Um, so, to start off, Benton, you know it's coming. All right. We well, just want you to talk a little bit about – your thoughts on the trades this season, you know, have they, obviously they probably haven't gone the way that you wanted them to, but do you think by the end of the season, we'll be able to look back and say that maybe it was more even or that you oh, yeah. won the trade? Yeah. Other than the one I had with you, which was a wash, but that one should never been done. That was right in that uh, two week period where I was down at the beach for two weeks straight. And I just got done with the, two of the big pineapple willies daiquiris after that. And so my judgment was a little <laughs> impaired on that one. But uh, as far as the Sony Gray trade goes, I don't really think it's the worst thing in the world. And if the Twins can actually add a bat and kind of figure out how to hit a baseball, he's got a 2-5 ERA. And so, I mean, he's still a great fucking pitcher. And so I still think he can turn out good in the end. And then uh, Mitchell just dropped Manoa. So me and him just basically swapped Solaire for uh, – Wayne Thomas, and so I'm pretty content with that. I think Solaire's going to be on pace to hit at least 40 home runs this season, so uh, I don't think that'll turn out just fine. The Merrill Kelly yeah. is the only one I think I lost, but uh, he's got some blood clots, and I kind of figured he'd get injured at some point this season. I just didn't think he'd be as good as he has been, but he has been a stud. Yeah, um, so going off of that, I just want to know if you can remember, like, what was your thought process sending out the Arenado trade? Um, uh, just, like, what were you thinking? I was trying to get rid of him. He, he, I, didn't, I had Grady's, and he was doing pretty good. And then uh, I figured I could get someone for, uh, like, Mary Kelly. But, uh, obviously, Patrick Wooden was a, a fucking fat plot. But Grady's <laughs> has been good all season. So, I, I have no complaints with Grady's. And then as far as points-wise for, like, Arenado and Gray, Gray still has more points on the season than him. So I'm not upset yeah. about it at all. I got you. But that was kind of my thought right. process is I had a third baseman, so I could give one up for a real good pitcher. Yeah, I mean, Sonny Gray was definitely killing it. Like, at the beginning of the year, I think he had the best ERA for a little bit. Yeah, um, I think he can Obviously, he's, he's regressed a little bit, but like you were saying. Um, His team don't help him much. Yeah. Yeah. But hopefully they, they can get a bat. I got you. Kevin, do you want to ask a question now? Um, yeah, I actually did one for Bitten. I mean, Bitten, I don't know if you know this, but you have the absolute worst pitching in the league. Um, like Man, it not is, me for once. Shocker. You are 16 is that off points the, uh... behind the worst on the, se- on the average for the season. 16 behind the 11th place person. How does that make you feel, and what are your plans to help with that? Is that, like, on my starting pitching or whatever? Yeah. Like, yeah. that's my points from starting pitching this season? hmm Yeah, well, I think the biggest problem with that is I've been a jackass and absolutely fumbled the bag on who I'm starting some weeks and who I'm benching some weeks. I think Will can kind of speak from experience this week. <laughs> if I would have started Bassett over Toronto like I should have, I win. So, you know, I think a lot of it's just me figuring it out. And, you know, mm-hmm. I was unfortunate to have this problem early in the season, but fortunate enough to go on still the longest win streak, I think, that's been in the uh, the league this season. Mm-hmm. So my team can still get hot and go at any point. I just got to be a better manager. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Hey, go- <laughs> going off of that, so you never start an actual RP. Do you ever think that, like, that kind of bites you in the butt? You're, like, <clears throat> just full set on SPRP? 
No, yeah, I'm pretty full set on it for the most part. But I do have Puck down there, and Puck's been pretty good for the Marlins, and the Marlins have been pretty good, and they've been in a lot of uh, chances to win games as long as they're not playing the Braves. So um, I've been trying to get him in there too when Kikuchi doesn't really have a good matchup and stuff. But if they're both on a two-start, it's hard to pass that up for a dude who could potentially come in for one inning and give you a negative 13 and then only maybe recover seven of those points later in the week. Mm-hmm. All right. So we keep hearing about uh, about this consultant, and you know, I just want to know, like, who who is this this guy, and has he actually like? Do you feel like he's benefited you and your team from the advice that he's given? And was he did he have a hand in any of these trades that you've made so far? No. Uh, I mean, I think the only person I really mentioned this to is you. I was like texting you. About yeah. when to trying to trade you someone or something like Instead that. Sending me the screenshots. I didn't <laughs> know if you were telling everyone about that. Okay. No, nah, I mean I think you're the only one that I've ever said something to about that. But uh, yeah, I mean just like I think all y'all consult a podcast or consult a you know website, Twitter, whatever. You know I got mm-hmm. some people I'd be I'd be consult- consulting and uh, seeing what their thought processes are because clearly can't go to any of you. That's just uh, bad opinions all around, but you know you got to have some people to to get a second opinion from and see what you could uh, potentially get better and potentially do uh, worse. But the Nolan Arenado one and stuff, he didn't. I don't think I texted him or anything or my any of my other buddies about that. Yeah, not really. I don't know. I think you were the only one I really texted him on about something. That was a rough one. Which one? Arenado. Wasn't that who yeah. he traded me for? Right? Yeah. In San yeah, yeah that, that was a rough one. Was it was it just them straight up or were there other no, people? Involved? I got I got Puck in San Gray and he got uh Arenado and Taylor Ward who Taylor Ward's mm-hmm. okay, yeah. waiver wire right. <laughs> outfielder. And you know, you were trying to get me Taylor so. Ward. I, I was pretty close to trying to get Taylor Ward, but I'm glad I didn't. Well, Glad, be glad you dodged that grenade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess, Kinsley, um, a couple of questions for you. Um, so, obviously, look at your season. Um, you definitely had a very long uh, rough patch there up till about week rough. six. Um, did you... I mean, now you've lost one. What is that? The last seven. So, yeah. what have you changed anything? I mean, you went from one twenty four, which I think is the lowest score yes, in the league, to two sixty, two twenty eight. I mean, three hundred. So, have you done anything? Was it that trade that you uh, did with uh, Brady? <laughs> what was it? No, <laughs> that trade was uh, cease for Water- Eduardo Rodriguez. Um, I think I got one, maybe two starts out of Iran, and then he went on the 15-day IL, which was two months, uh, with a torn tendon in his throwing cam. Hey, I'm just Um, saying, you could have gotten some value from uh, from Merrill Kelly. Merrill Kelly, I'm sure. I know. Um, But, you know, I mean, it's really had to make me test uh, the waivers. Um, I know I went and picked up a bunch of pitchers. By no means are they good. Because when I say these names, you're going to be like, what the hell? Um, but, like, Kyle Gibson gave me a, a couple of good starts. And he's still on my bench. He's not good. I'm, well, He's my, you know, spot you play around with. Um, but also, like, I picked up Braxton Garrett. I've been watching him now. He's not doing great tonight, but he has put up – let me see. I wrote that down. He put up um, 102 points in the last 30 days. Um, averages about 12 a game, uh, which that's what I needed. I needed to go away from like the nine, the eight to nine average, uh, where you yeah. occasionally get a 15, a 17, um, to somebody who's going to put up in the 20s. And he'll say, like, like every pitcher, he has had, you know, a negative 12, a negative 10, a, b- a bad game here and there where he just got rocked. But um, today, I, I don't think he'll put up probably more than five total. I think he's probably like eight or nine right now. Most likely he's going like, to get the loss um, tonight. I think they were tied or maybe down by one. Um, but 
he's somebody that I had to, to pick up because I needed to fill that pitching spot while Eduardo Rodriguez is out. And also uh, Nestor Cortez, he's been mm-hmm. – iffy all the beginning of the season and he's been out with a shoulder injury um he's hoping to also come back this week both of them are still on the bench this week but hoping to pull them back um at the time brady definitely got the better end of the deal i mean i think i wrote down cease for the last six starts put up six 21 16 15 17 15 so he's been solid uh last six um starts there so I'm hoping that Eduardo Rodriguez will come back. He plays the A's as one of the starts this week as his first start back, but I just I couldn't start him immediately after being back for after being gone for two months. I want to at least wait and see how he recuperates and making sure he actually does start on Wednesday, and then hoping the next matchup I'll um, decide to put him in. Yeah, yeah, because I mean that makes that makes perfect sense. Definitely looking at especially your batters too. Last 30 days, Justin Turner's been popping off. Justin Turner's been popping off, yep. yeah. Yeah. And then Freddie Freeman doing Freddie Freeman things. Also, and, you know, and yeah. right, yeah, Altuve's back now. Altuve came back a couple weeks ago, um, and he's been uh, doing really good since having him back. Um, you know, Austin Riley had a really good week last week, too. And before last mm-hmm. week, I was even trying to throw some trades out for Austin Riley to get some better pitchers. Um, yeah. Thankfully, nobody took Austin Riley. Um, and he actually really, really helped out last week and kind of solidified my almost 100 point win against Austin. Yeah. Nice. So, so hey, how does it feel to uh, to not? It obviously, it doesn't matter, but you know, you have a a pitcher who throws a perfect game oh, right there on man. your bench. You know, he he is a cheater, but he still threw a, a perfect game. <laughs> he threw a perfect game. It's awesome. Uh, he's pitching right now. He's not doing great. <laughs> um, I kind of figured that that was going to happen because, you know, you go off perfect game, and then right now he's got five points through 4.1. They're down two to three. If they don't score, you know, he's bound to get the loss there, kind of end up with a zero there. Um, but before that perfect game, though, he had negative 17 and negative 21. I was about to drop him. I was like, there's no way in hell I'm pitching this man this week. That is and so crazy. When the perfect game came about, and I remember texting Ethan and be like, he just threw a perfect game and he's on my bench. Are you kidding me? And then I go back and remind myself, I'm like, he threw negative 17 and negative 21. That's why I had him on the bench. Yep. I don't care yeah. who he's playing. I don't care if he was playing the A's. Still, he threw negative 21 against the Red Sox and negative 17 against the Mariners. Even though against the A's, I was expecting 10 maybe at that point, given how bad he did before. I mean, that, that's hard to come back from. I think that just shows to uh, stream pitchers against the A's whenever the possibility arises. It yeah. does. That's it you got to. On them. And, and see, and that so that's what we're worried about. Like, Eduardo Rodriguez, Wednesday, he comes back from his injuries, pitching against the A's. It's the first month, or first start back in two months. Is it worth pitching him because he's against the A's? Or is it not? I don't know. I just couldn't couldn't take it this time. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's a bad. Decision. And maybe you come back and bite me, and if it does, it does. I just I couldn't didn't think it was worth it right now. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so Benton, I'm coming back around to you. Okay. Uh-huh. So when you look at the standings, you know, and then the points for, it doesn't look great. I think you technically have the lowest amount of points mm-hmm. in the league. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. You're on a, a four-game loss streak, right? A lot of people are, are starting to count you out. But, you know, I want to know if you think that you can still win the toilet bowl. Uh, no, nah, I'm kidding. Yeah. You still think that you can make the playoffs. But well, Unlike probably some of y'all in here, I've made the playoffs every year. I've been in this thing, so I'm not sweating the bullet right now. We're six and seven. I'm sitting right in the middle of the pack with how tight it's been this year. It's been real competitive, so I ain't too worried about slipping. And as far as the points go, it's kind of like I said earlier, I've left a lot of points on my bench and my poor decisions on my pitching. And I'm not the uh, I'm not too terribly far behind some of the other people in the lower end of the points for, but obviously you want to see it be higher. But you know, if I make some more correct decisions there, I think those points are a lot higher. But we've also been stacking, you know, Kyle Wright on the the bench, and we'll see. Hopefully, maybe he'll be come back and be a stud too. Uh, mm-hmm. 
but I still think the bass are good too. They started hot and I think they've kind of cooled off a little bit uh, in the middle part of the season. And so hopefully after the all-star break, we'll be back swinging hard and throwing hard. Yeah, but your, yeah, he, your hitters have done fairly well this year. We're kind of middle of the pack, <clears throat> pack there. But yeah, that pitch, those uh, pitching's been what's kind of killing you. Yeah. I mean, Garrett a lot great, of, you know. Yeah, a lot of it's just me making poor decisions, like I said. I've left Bassett on the bench twice when he's too long for like 30 and 29. So, and there's plenty of other pitchers like that where Kikuchi will have a shitty two days and I bench him and he goes, you're 20-something. And, you know, sometimes you just miss out on some points. But, you know, you just got to have some better judgment. Kikuchi, though, is definitely one of those guys, to your point, that will throw 25 and will throw negative 20 back to back. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's a matter of, you know, are you willing to take the risk? I feel like he's very in the right, the right oh, week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why Kikuchi's on the bench this week. Yeah. I see that you got AJ Puck in. Dude, yeah. but, uh, you know, Dunning, he got you 33 points last week, so that's nice. Exactly, yeah. Dane Dunning Shocker. Is savage. He ain't too bad. He's got a two-something ERA. He's been pretty good filling in for the, for the Rangers and his father, DeGrom, and all the injuries they've had with their pitching staff coming out of the bullpen. But he's been a real good starter for him. I think yeah. he's like six and one or something, or six and two, something like that. Cool. Um. Will, you uh, you got any other questions? Are you ready to hop into the power rankings? Uh, I'm ready to hop into the power rankings if y'all are. Okay. Sure. All right. All right. So, uh, Will, do you want to go the go the uh, little round robin that we did last time, or you want to? How do you want to do it? I'm a huge fan of the round robin, the okay. little snake that we do, but we don't have to do that. Yeah, we'll do a snake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. Whatever. Do we want? Who do we want to go first? So let's start with Kinsley. Okay. Who's number twelve, Kinsley? Who's number twelve? Oof. Um. You know, I gotta even see if he won last week. Um. I really feel like it's still either Brady or Alex. I think both of their teams are still like, man. And honestly, I don't know where the scores for this past week. I was going to say, I don't know the scores for this past week. Um, I feel like we haven't seen some wins in a while. Alex has lost four in a row. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm going to put I'm gonna put Alex at 12. Fair. Poor Alex. He's also just struggling to put up points. I and mean, what is that? I mean, I know 213. I know we did have ones lower. I mean, that's still middle of the bottom of the pack there. Yeah. All right, Benton, you want to go next? Yeah, I'll uh, I'll go with Cody. <clears throat> His teammate. That's a solid choice. It ain't too. Yeah. I mean, he's got Han. Han's pretty good. France is a fucking dirty piece of shit. He took out Freddy's. Fuck him. Stock's all right. Machado's something. Seager is good as hell, though. And there is right now. But pitching's kind of eh. They haven't been like what they should be this season. Uh, He's five and eight, three lost streak, not looking too hot. Mm-hmm. Kevin, who you got? The ten. I'm at ten. Ooh, I probably got. You know, Ben, I want to put you there, but still, with you being six and seven, I think I'm going to hold off on that. Um. I think I'm going to have to go with Austin. Um, I know he went from 278, but, I mean, he's only won one game in his past. What is that? Whatever that math is. Six? So, yeah. Definitely you know what's Austin crazy? Is that, like, I feel like, I mean, Shohei is just playing out of his mind. Out of his mind. Mm-hmm. And Corbin Carroll. And, like, low-key, Corbin Carroll probably goes in the first two rounds next year. Oh, yeah. And then, like, he has Pete Alonso. Like, I don't know. He, he has some dogs. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. And then you have Bregman, but, you know. But at number number nine, I'll love Benton, but I'm probably going to put you there. 
just because of the uh, the four game loss streak. So, you know, I think uh, I think your team has the potential. I think you made some good points about you know just not starting the right people, but until you start mm-hmm. making the right picks, I think uh, I'm, I'm going to keep you there. What do I have? You had eight. Right. Um, let's see. What do we have left here? I don't know. I'm kind of go like, I look at the records and then I look at the points and I don't feel like they kind of match each other. Like, Logan is five and eight. And I feel like, though, that he still has put up some of the most points in the league overall. Um, so I don't know if he necessarily deserves the drop to eight. Um, but also the record just doesn't hold. I feel like that I need to see more from, from Brady's team. I'm going to put Brady at eight. I, I know he's six and seven, but he's honestly squeaked by a handful of times. Um, I feel like he floats the line of making the playoffs or not. And at the end, Brady's Brady. He'll probably make the playoffs, but I think he's right there. <laughs> yep. I like until last week, I thought, like, his team was really good. But then last week, like, just all of his, like, people, or, like, Ellie De Cruz and mm-hmm. them just weren't doing it. Also, he started Joey Votto. And he, uh, Joey Votto did not get a single hit last the week. The fact that Joey Votto is on any team right now. I know he's bad. Yeah. A couple hits and whatever. But the fact he's on a fantasy team, there's a lot of better guys on the waivers that are better than Joey Votto. Yeah. But he's got some good pitchers. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Benton, you got it uh, seven. Uh, well, I mean, I wouldn't put him this high. I'd put him on the outside looking in. But just so y'all can't put him any spots from this higher, I'll put Logan at uh, seven. I have zero faith in this team. Yeah, Logan's Yami team is uh, interesting. I don't know how they have this many points. I guess they've just kind of been winging it, living on the prayer so far, because some of these people are just all bats, uh, sus. No pitching. Sus. Well, and even the bats, it's like, how long does Salvador Perez and keep doing what he's doing? That is true. Shit, and like, Marcelo Zuna, is he going to actually continue to do what the fuck he's doing this season? And like, there's a lot of. He's another good run tonight. Yeah, well, that is good. But Mookie oh, is happy for the birds. But yeah. I'd put him in there. I mean, no, what he it? will get Jordan Alvarez back, which is pretty big. Yeah, that is too. But his record's just not that good. He seems to be unlucky. Uh, yeah. And the team just, I don't know, there's a lot of question marks there to me. Dude, yeah, I, I said this like five weeks ago, but I cannot believe that he is still bag holding Tristan McKenzie. <laughs> Like he is back yeah. on the IL, and that is just yeah. wild to me. But if you it's do, because his pitching is so trash, like he's really got, he really has to back on that. Or yeah, back on that. And yeah. it does say though, the latest update in fantasy says that he'll remain shut down for three more weeks. That was updated yeah. three hours ago. Oh, and that's my just gosh. shut down. That's not like him shut, that's not three. coming that's back. Just bullpen. Going to pick up a baseball. And Don't pick up baseball. Can hold it. Yeah. Yeah. Partially torn sure. right UCL mid June. I bet he doesn't come back this year. I bet that, that changes. Yeah, I'd put him at nine. I was, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So are we at six now? Six. Yeah. It's me. I'm gonna have to put Mitchell there at six. Um well, he's on a two loss streak. He had a good week against me. I mean, I think he was Yeah, yeah, third highest, but still still caught the L. But you know. I mean, but before that, Mitchell's team was kind of uh, those past four weeks before uh, 13 were pretty rough for him. He's lucky he came out with two wins. I like. Uh, Oh, wait, no, we already said. No. Did we already say Mitchell? I don't think so. Oh, no. Never mind. Sorry, I moved it. Oops. Um, Mitchell's team's pretty fraudulent to me, I feel like. I'm surprised that he's been able to make it all the way up to six. Um. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Hayden's team at at five. Sure. I think I think that team's overperforming. I can put it. Uh, 
But, you know, five's not bad, and I really don't think he has the worst team ever. But yeah. when I look at his team, I'm like, I don't see any, like, true all-stars. So, but I don't know. His team's been coming alive recently. Has some of the most points for, so. Megan? Yeah. I'm I'm going with myself next because I don't think I'm better than the other teams that are up here. <laughs> so I'll definitely um, be humble about it and put myself in fourth. I will say, though, I am very happy and very proud of my batters for picking it up because my pitchers have not been all that this year. Um, but I know, like, Freddie's helped a lot. Obviously, having Altuve back has helped a lot. Uh, Riley and Bo Bichette, like, I feel like I've got a solid infield and a solid set of batters that can continuously help progress me week after week. Um, not saying they're winning everything and not saying uh, that, you know, I'm better than some of the teams who are already ranked, but I'm very happy with how we've gone the past seven games and, and going six and one. I would have definitely put you higher, Kinsley, but uh, we'll see. For, hey, uh, let me, let me fly low. Humble. Let me fly low. <laughs> Kevin, who would you have put it up for? You. Dang. Uh, Benton's uh, to you. Yeah, uh, this is another person I would put extremely low than at three, but since we're at three, I don't know how they've risen this high, but that is Ethan. <laughs> uh, this team is just absolutely outside of Marcus Simeon like, and Garcia. That's what we got. Mm -hmm. And Nolan Arenado, if he wants to show up depending on what week it is. Bobby Witt's okay. And then uh, his pitching, he's got Castillo, who's been and eh, Kirby, and eh, Servino, who's averaging 2-8. But, I mean, he just came back, so maybe he turns it around and Lizardo. And then Hunter Green's hurt, but he's sus. Probably Miller's hurt. He's got Haney. So maybe Woodruff comes back and absolutely deals for him. But um, he's got the most, the least amount of points scored against him. He's had the easiest schedule so far, just take walking through. And, yeah, I have no faith in that team. I'd put him at, like, eight. But, yeah, but here we are. Somehow he's, like, nine and four, which is That fun. is crazy. He has, like, <laughs> 300 less points allowed. And he like always talks about, He's got a horseshoe up his, his ass. And hopefully yeah. he does tonight at the casino just for the sake of me. But he's got a horseshoe up his ass. Oh, no, yeah, and he's he's very egotistical about it right now, and I'm waiting for Carmen to just come it all crashing down. It seems like it's already coming to his pitching, but yeah, I mean his uh, I'm just not impressed with the bats and stuff. He always talks about his yeah. bats are really good, but they're really not. He's got like one or two guys averaging three points, but that's really about it. Is a cougar is uh, is Judge coming back this year? Yeah, and is Ju is Judge dead? Like, what happened? Like, what's, what's going on? There? I think he is. Dead? Or, like, just not coming back. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> I don't know, but he's been on the aisle 10 for way more than 10 days. Hey, that was the same as Eduardo Rodriguez. Aisle 15 for three months. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Aaron Judge is going to be out for, like, six months. And, you Dude, know, who knows if Ethan's team get why, like, to get lucky. Yeah. I don't get why GMs do that crap. Where, like... Just say, if someone's season's done, just tell us. Because, like, I was bad yeah. holding Robbie Ray for, like, no reason. See, baseball yeah. reporters are the shittiest, shittiest reporters ever. Yeah. Like, you get the news, like, 25 days after it happened. Yeah. I remember when Eduardo Rodriguez got hurt. I I couldn't even, like, find anything about it. I think I had him in my yeah. lineup, and it said IL-15, and nothing on Fantasy showed up. When you Google it, still nothing showed up. The next day, then it was like, oh, he tore something in his finger, and he's going to be out eight weeks. I'm like, excuse me? Like, there was nothing in the fantasy app, like, no ESPN yeah. notification, nothing about the injury until, like, a day after. And yeah, like, they didn't even, like, up. or, like, <laughs> Merrill Kelly with, like, how he had blood clots, and they didn't say anything until, like, Tuesday. Jeez. Just being a double agent trying to, to not play against Benton. <laughs> Exactly. Right. He was looking out for me. <laughs> Kevin, who you got to do? Um, Will, I mean, I got to put you. Somehow you're at two, <laughs> but we'll leave it at that. Um, Will, who you got a one? Oh, uh, I guess. <laughs> I got Kevin. 
There's only one left, huh? Kevin is a buzzsaw right now. It's kind of sad. I mean, <laughs> mm-hmm. Christian Yelich just having a, a revival. Yep. Acuna doing yeah. Acuna things. Um, I don't know. Until Will he stay I, healthy, he, Here's the thing, though. You know, just with how fantasy is, I'm sure that you will end the season, like, number one, and then you will lose – week one against mm-hmm. um, an eighth overall team. So yeah. I'm not yeah. worried. Yeah. Always what happens. It's just a good Every, feeling. I think I'm 200 yeah. points clear of everyone. For yeah, I mean, four. Gonna, dude, Acuna averages like 30 points a week if you do the math. It is insane. He's um, a mop it Just crazy. But everyone's got a couple losses up there, man. Anything yeah. can happen. Yeah. 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 It's true. Anything can happen. It has spread out a lot more though from what it was a couple of weeks ago. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, and as as it as it should the time. Yeah. Well, um, that's all I got. Will Kinsley, Pitt, and y'all got anything y'all would like to say before we uh, hop off the call? Yeah. Ethan Pleasure Logan. talking with y'all. Ethan and Logan seems are overrated as shit. Benton, if you wanna. Talk trades about Vladdy. Hit my lines. Let me uh, only talk to my consultant. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Fuck you." <laughs> hey, I'm just that. happy I've been on the podcast now three times. One time was because I was the absolute worst team in the league, and that last two have either been the highest score or second highest score to our host here tonight. So. I'm happy to be here, happy to continue to be here, and, and hope uh, to be on many more times this season. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Character development. Indeed. Yeah. All right. Thank you all for uh, hopping on. Um, looking forward to the rest of the season. Good luck. All right. Peace. Thanks, guys. Bye. See y'all. Y'all take it easy. Bye.